Hello again! Welcome back! As usual, this is Becca going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow Win Online. And welcome back for another week discussing Linden scripting language. If you recall from last week, I talked about how I make my little greeters that can tell if you're coming or going. And I believe I mentioned that there I have a system set up for managing them as a whole, but I was not going into all of the detail on that last week. Well, here I'm going to start to go into it. I have them set up where they all communicate with a central server that then give, sends the commentary information to a specific avatar. And this is very good if you have more than a couple of these, like if you're running a large sim for roleplay or say uh, an art gallery or any number of other things where you may have multiple of these and the way i have it set up it actually reads from note cards in order to cut down on the script itself but note card reading i'm going to hold off for next week just because there's kind of a, a bit to it and i don't want to bog this down too far this week so this week we're just going to cover how to send things to a server and then have that relay the information. And we've gone over all of the pieces I'm going to cover in other videos, but somebody who's just searching around to find this specifically, or for people that haven't really thought through how to apply this, we're going to go back all over all of that in a new context. And that will pave the way for next week to cover the last part. So, without further ado, if you remember these, just a nice little thing, if you walk across it going the one way, it will say to you, Welcome to my world, Rebecca Wendell, because that's my actual SL name. Hope you enjoy your stay. And if you go the other way, thanks for visiting us. Please come again soon. So, how are we going to set this up to a server? As so often happens, we start with the Mark 1 cube. which we will call a visitor greeter. Create a fresh script in it. And we're going to start with your basic listen. We'll start on channel negative 100. We need to actually hear from your greeter itself. So whatever name you have, you can copy and paste that into here. If you're going to have multiple of them, it's not always practical to filter by key, especially because you then have to have a different one of these for every one of your greeters. Whereas if you have just a single name for it, that works out. Though if you're going to have a bunch of them saying different things, then you'll need to have it a separate listen for each of them. Anyway, actually two separate listens, but we'll go into that in just a minute. The thing, though, is that if you ever pick them up and put them back down, that will change their key. Well, actually, I'm not 100% sure it does, but if you copy them, I know it will change the key. So you don't want to be entirely reliant on that. You can do it if you need security, but keeping tabs on all the keys, a bit of a pain in the rear. So unless you absolutely require security use null key. We also are not going to be able to dictate exactly what the message is, so just leave that as a pair of quotation marks, because that will mean it will listen for anything. You can make the two channels anything you want for, sim for simplicity's sake. For this lesson, I'm using 100 and negative 100. The integer channel, string what, key who, string message, and then obviously we're going to break this down by which one. So if chan equals negative 100, and else if chan equals 100, 
the other thing we're going to need is we're actually going to need to store a key. And I'm going to show you why in just a minute. So you want to make a variable, key foo2. And we don't need to define that right now, actually. We're putting this in here because we only need it during the listen. So Second Life is free to forget it when that's no longer immediately relevant. Now, we go back into here to show how this is going to work out. If you want to continue to actually give the name or speak the names for a specific individual, then we'll also have string name equals key to name who to. You can copy that over here. It's just the instant message, which is done to a key, who, welcome to my world, Make this a little simpler. Name. Change that to foo2. Foo2. And we will no longer require these, so those can go away. We'll leave the debug in there. And change this one to an inside trigger. So we want the, the leaving. That's channel 100. Region say 100. String foo. Say negative one hundred. Strength. Now, how this all works, we now have to. How this all works is instead of actually just sending a direct message as we had before. This time, it sends a message to channel 100 containing the detected key, which is established on the collision start. Here, string key who to equals message. Why doesn't it like this? Yep, because I accidentally put a period there instead of a comma. There we go. So, we still get the same effect. Welcome to my world, hope you enjoy your stay, and my name. But it's now being sent from the server. Because there is no actual speech. 
Noctual say or instant message in that part. And it's coming from visitor greeter. As you see, right there. I was trying to highlight that, but SL was not playing ball. This is particularly useful if you're setting up multiple of these because it allows you to have one central place you can go to change all of them. As long as each of them are sending on a different channel, or that any of them that are going to have the same message are sending on the same channel. So you're able to filter out different messages based on locations, which is actually how I have this sim set up. If you recall, I come through here, GM description, stepping off the street here, and then come through here. It's an entirely different message. And through here, yet another different message. The way that is actually set up, and sort of a prelude to what I'm going to show you next week, I have a filter to teleport there, is this thing. You've seen this in the background of some of my other videos, now you're going to start to understand what some of it is. It's got a bit of content here. Each of these different note cards contains one of the bits of commentary it's supposed to hear. So, there you go. Here, stepping out of the machine room. Actually, that would not be the correct one to show you. Here we go. Stepping off the streets of Southern Calabashi into the parking garage of the lofts plunges into a dimly lit concrete box. That is one of the messages we'd gotten. Stepping off the streets of Southern Calabashi into the parking garage of the lofts plunges into a dimly lit concrete box. So that shows you right there. That message is actually contained here. If I want to change it, I alter the note card, and everything's fine. I can actually take this note card out, back it up, I can rewrite them for different events, I can have different sets of them for different events, no problem. This is just a more expanded version of what you just saw me show you how to create. In this case, though, what it does is when it messages, it actually breaks down, removes the key, and then actually deals with which particular line to get. Card is a portion of the message, um, inventory note card. and everything is done on one channel. This is a more complicated version of what I showed you. I'll be going over this version next week. It's more complicated because it involves data server. And I want to kind of dedicate the majority of the video to that. So that's why you're getting a simpler version this week and a more complicated one next week. So for next week's, we'll be back probably back here in the loft and going over how to read information off a note card and ways to parse out the string to make this system I'm showing you for a greeter even more effective. So, hope to see you back, and until then, good day, good luck, happy coding! And please remember, I try to have these videos up every Tuesday by noon Eastern Standard Time. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave comments under the given video. Uh, if you have particular problems with something, I lately haven't been in SL as much as I used to, but if you send me a message uh, or leave a, a comment asking me to get in touch with you, or if you send me a message in Second Life, um, actually sending me a message in Second Life works fairly well. 
if you also mention in a YouTube comment that uh, you need a hand with something, because I actually get more message, it actually emails me when you leave those. Um, but if you send me a message in Second Life, do tell me what it's for and what it's regarding. It's kind of creepy if I get a just a strange message from a name I don't recognize and don't know why. So if you <laughs> if you do it, please try to tell me why. So and I can give you a hand with your own projects if you're having an issue and it's not something that's going to take too much time because I do have a actual contract working on a project in a outside of Second Life in a different programming language that I need to focus a lot of my attention on. So but anyway. Um, I guess that's it for this week. So take care and thanks for watching.